Good morning guys, I'm here today at Paltons Park in Hampshire, just outside of Southampton. This is actually considered to be one of the best family theme parks here in the UK. They have a number of roller coasters, a brand new log flume which is opening this year, and it's just a lovely place to visit. So let's get inside and check out Paltons Park. We'll start with a bit of a wander through the gardens um, as many of the rides aren't going to open for about another 15 to 20 minutes yet so so we have a uh, a garden aviary here with some scarlet ibis look how bright these are that's quite a nice little seating area here it's kind of off the beaten track a little bit if you want to chill out for a little while and then there's a little walkway across here across the little pond i'll go and explore that in a minute and we've got some topiary birds having a little smooch they do put quite a lot of effort into their gardens and the overall kind of presentation and landscaping of the park here which is obviously awesome to see so let's go for a wander down a discovery trail and see what we discover so as we can see here, there are a few native species such as badgers and snakes, otters, bats. And a number of trees as well, which is uh, less surprising. So there should be some lemurs in there. I can't see any out to play, unfortunately. Which is a shame because lemurs are pretty cool, aren't they? little ring-tailed bad boys We've got some quite cool carvings on the tree stumps here so they do put effort into the, the little things and you know you step out of the park well literally by about 10 meters and it's like being in a nature reserve and the bugs are living in their hotel there it is like a serene country walk at the moment and yet if i look slightly to my left there are roller coasters through the trees and these are those weird things that you shout down and then you can hear them up at that one up there but i can't test it because i'm on my own unless i develop mr fantastic stretchy abilities and then i might be able to do something it's a quite a nice walk through the discovery trail there it is a very nice enjoyable walk in the nature and as soon as you come out here we're straight back into theme park action so yeah this spits you out into the uh, lost kingdom which is their dinosaur themed area it is all very jurassic parky around here we've got a velociraptor enclosure pen shoot her shoot her So this is a really nice area of the park. You've got two Vekoma family coasters overhead, loads of dinosaur animatronics. It's, uh, it's cool, if you like dinosaurs, you really can't grumble with this section of Paltons Park. So yeah, it's a confirmation there that the, uh, the rides are open today from 10.30 until 4.30. So entrance today costs £43.50 when booked in advance. That does include car parking as well. So uh, when you factor it in, it's, it's roughly the same sort of price you pay for Legoland or Chessington, which are sort of the comparable family parks, I guess. This right here is Velociraptor. This is a Vekoma family boomerang. So you get winched up the lift hill there, go around the circuit, back up into that hill, and then do the whole thing backwards. And right next door, Flight of the Pterosaur, which is an inverted family coaster or a suspended one, depending on what you want to call it. Looking quite nice with the sun beaming through there. And they have a third coaster, more of a kiddie coaster down here, Dino Chase. Very small little one. Very cute baby Triceratops here who just loves to run around. But before the first 
Yeah, I'm not sure I can justify riding that one, not without losing any sense of credibility that I have left. But I do like Triceratops, so... Oh, the Raptors are getting fired up. Ready to eat some riders, or at least slightly intimidate them. So I've not made it clear in previous vlogs, I'd really like a dinosaur animatronic in my house. So if anyone wants to set up a GoFundMe. So beginning the day with a ride on Flight of the Pterosaur. This is a Vekoma suspended coaster. Let's go. began a day there with Flight of the Pterosaur. You kind of know what you're getting with those Vekoma family suspended coasters, but they're always loads of fun. It actually pulled some quite decent forces on the first drop there, even at the front of the train. And the helixes really do pin you back into the seat. So yeah, you know what, as a family coaster, that's a lot of fun. We've got another one over there to do as well. So let's tick off both the Vekomas. So kids, when you're on a roller coaster and you want to film things, use a securely mounted GoPro and not a handheld phone like that knob. So Reggie Raptor, what do you think of loose article policies and people who break them? Well I think they're Yeah, apologies for the Raptor's language there. These guys, are, they have no chill. You sound suspiciously sampled from Jurassic Park. two back-to-back -back front row rides on Velociraptor there. There was no queue, so the ride operator kindly let us stay on, so that was nice. It's quite a fun ride. It's obviously very short, very family orientated, but it does pull some decent forces in areas. Yeah, can't complain of that at all. Well, seeing as Dino Chase has no queue and I have no shame, I'm gonna go and get a new credit. So this is 254. I don't think it's gonna be the most intense.
Well, Dino Chase was certainly a roller coaster. Um, obviously, I'm not the target audience for that kind of attraction. I do feel slightly ashamed of myself. So they have a whole dinosaurs trail here in the Lost Valley. I mean, you can go through, see all the various little dinosaurs. I say little, some of them are quite large and have mass. So while most of the park is open at this time of the year, there are still a few rides closed and being worked on for maintenance. Cobra over the back there will open at 12. And over this side of Lost Kingdom, we have their new log flume ride, which is splashing into the Lost Kingdom this year. That's been worked on at the moment. It looks like it's mostly constructed. I don't know if you can see over the construction fence there. But that all looks to be coming together very nicely. Well, seeing as it's so quiet today, I'm gonna to have a ride on the Dinosaur Torco, because let's be honest, it's never a bad day to see some dinosaurs on a tour. So we'll be getting into one of those little Jeeps shortly. the dinosaur tour is interesting i think there's some good ideas in there and some all right animatronics also a really bad animatronic at the end there with the raptor who looked very rubbery and i think there was supposed to be a sound effect because it just sort of popped out and went it was weird so i have this really nice awesome like oriental section of the garden here really nice looking a lot of trees are, are wrapped up at the moment though so it's uh, it's not in peak condition just yet i've got some sort of henge style seating going on here as well do you know what henge is i don't think anyone does a little sort of pagoda this is all very nice isn't it i've got the face carved into the rock and a little gong around here as well fortunately nothing to bash it with Yeah, that was underwhelming, wasn't it? So before I make my way into Tornado Springs, let's have a quick wander around Critter Creek. They do actually have another coaster credit here that I don't have because I didn't ride Caterpillar Coaster last time I was here. So I think I'm going to grab that. Look at these mad little things. This guy 
It looks like he's having a, a difficult time. I gotta say, I do like slightly wacky theming. I did eventually get my ride on Caterpillar Coaster there. It's fine, it's just a Zera family coaster. Nothing to get too hyped about. Also managed to trip myself up as I got out of the train. I did try and fall with style. There is some very weird theming around this ride. So I found myself on Route 88 and into Tornado Springs. So what we have here is Storm Chaser. This is a Mack ride spinning family coaster. A lot of fun, a little on the short side, but uh, but does pull some good forces. And this restaurant here, the Route 83 Diner, was actually voted the best theme park restaurant at the UK Theme Park Awards last year. So I may check this out for lunch. However, I did see something over the other side there that looked quite good as well. So. We will see. So this is a really nicely themed area of the park. I'm gonna start now with a ride on Storm Chaser. Uh, this is a Mack ride spinning coaster. You may be aware that about an hour up the M3, there's another fairly hyped Mack rides coaster that got topped off this week. So might go and give that a look on the way home. But for now, let's go for a spin. Very low queue times today, it's not that busy at all, so uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Got a tractor poking out of the barn up there. a fun and quite forceful ride on Storm Trade Chaser there. When you get the spin and you get certain elements at certain angles, it really makes a difference. Uh, so I actually had two rides there. The first one, uh, my GoPro played up and I didn't actually manage to record it. So I thought I'd jump back around again for another front row ride. I have to say the second ride was really, really good. Um, really hit that helix down the bottom here. Kind of facing inwards and backwards and it really pulled some strong g-forces there so yeah this is one of the best family coasters in the country and well worth a trip down here for So next up I'm doing Cyclonator, which is a Zamperla pendulum swing. This is really forceful and one of the best flat rides in the country, so I'm really looking forward to getting back on this. Um, unfortunately things didn't work out so well for this cow. He's been there about four years now, bad times.
later was pretty good fun there. Not quite as intense as I remember it, but still some really good forceful moments. Gyro swings are just tons of fun, and although the Zamperla versions are not quite as awesome as the Intamins, this is still a really good addition to the park. Now on that ride, you may have noticed the little blue coaster behind me, which is Farmyard Flyer. And this actually opened a year after Tornado Springs opened itself. I've not actually ridden this before, so let's go and give this one a go. It is only a little family coaster. So farmy I fly there, obviously a coaster aimed at younger guests, but that was pretty good fun. And what I'll say is the theming around the ride itself and the station is really impressive. Uh, they really do do a good job here in making it a very immersive environment. And I also really like how the propeller on the front of the plane spins around as you go. Nice touch. So they have quite a nice little viewing platform up here as well over the uh, Owl's Car Academy. It does give some really nice views of Storm Chaser as well from here. It's, it's really nice that a park would think about these little things as well. It's the little details that really make a difference and really make a park feel like an immersive and enjoyable environment to be in. And it is of course worth pointing out that Portons Park is an independent park. This isn't like Merlin, a big multinational corporation with a huge portfolio. Um, you know, They've done a fantastic job here to build this up the way they have over the last decade. So I was going to grab some food in Route 83. However, I just had a quick look in there and it's very busy. So I think I might head round to Hay Barn, which is just around the other side there, because that looked pretty good as well. There's also this classic Victorian carousel as well. On two levels, proper old school vibes. Always good to see these classics kept in good condition. So Grand Central is another new cafe restaurant opening uh, later this spring. This is really big. So a big thing that put Portland's Park on the map was Peppa Pig World. I think this opened the park up to a massive new audience and allowed them to really invest and grow the park in other areas off the back of this. So that's really cool to see. Obviously, there's not much here that suits my personal tastes, but I'm going to have a wander around to show you kind of what kind of rides and attractions they've got here. And the all-round theme is really impressive. It's all actually quite serene around here, especially with it not being as busy as normal. So I think hay barn is going to be my option for lunch. Feeling a bit of Mexican. So I grabbed myself a burrito there. Uh, the meal came to £13.50. That includes the burrito fries, which are actually pretty good, and a drink. Uh, if you want to add any fairly basic upgrades to your burrito, like sour cream, for example, that will cost you extra. So that's a bit of a shame, but I think £13.50 is probably in line with what you'd expect to pay at a theme park for this kind of size meal. So I'm going to tuck in so first bite in, it's pretty good, but it is really, really hot. Or in the words of Hallam Partridge, hotter than the sun. And it's quite an impressive view of Lost Kingdom as you come in from this angle. Can't beat a coaster skyline. So what you notice as you come up towards this end of the park is that the theming becomes a lot more minimal. So this is one of the older sections of the park. Um, and I do think 
if there's one criticism or one opportunity I guess for Portland to improve it is to kind of bring this area in line with the rest of the park because everything else is so really so well put together so well themed really immersive and around here it's a little bit uh like I say a bit minimalist So Cobra is a Gertzlau bobsled coaster. That means it contains very small cars, which seats four people and does some very tight wild mousey type maneuvers, a few helixes and a couple of mad airtime hills at the end there. So I'm going to go and get on this one. And I'll take you along for the ride. Cobra is decent. It's uh, pretty forceful. Obviously, some very tight turns in there as well. That's decent. Like, uh, that's, a, that's a perfectly enjoyable ride. Again, like the other coasters here, it's it's sort of mid tier. Um, I do think maybe, hopefully, in the future, they will invest in something a little bit bigger. Um, it does feel the way Portland's Park has gone that they've kind of built up from Peppa Pig, which is obviously aimed at very young guests. And it sort of worked the way up through the ages and Tornado Springs, which is the most recent area, obviously has a couple of more thrilling attractions like Cyclonator and Storm Chaser. So fingers crossed the next investment will uh, maybe be something bigger, but we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of that, so you may recall earlier in the video, I mentioned they do still have quite a lot of unused land here, potential plots for new rides. And when you look at this space here, you could certainly fit something decent on here. Now behind the bushes at the back there is another field as well, which looks as though it also belongs to the park. Now I might not be correct on that, but there was some digging and construction activity in there, which you may have seen from the on-ride POV of Cobra there. So who knows what's gonna come in the future. I really hope that uh, at Portland's Park maybe we'll just step up a level on the next roller coaster. I believe that every good family theme park needs to have a sort of a thrill attraction in there as well. If you look at the major um, kind of family based theme parks around the world when you consider the likes of Universal Studios and that sort of thing SeaWorld, all of those they do have one or two kind of big standout rides that complement the big family offering as well so I'd love to see Portland's Park go in that direction but what they've got here already is really really good so I guess time will tell so as I'm around here I think I'm going to do Magma which is their drop tower this is exactly the same model as Croc Drop at Chessington, although this did come first. So uh, yeah, let's go and give Magma a quick go and get launched out of a volcano. Not quite as intimidating as a crocodile's mouth, but still kind of cool. Gotta say, yeah, the, this rockwork theming is, uh, it does feel a bit dated compared to other aspects of the park. I did not expect this queue to go on for this long. Oh, this is quite cool.
nothing while I'm round here and there's still a zero minute queue. Flight of the Pterosaur one more time is in order. I did eat meat, yes, that is right. We, we do eat meat, but luckily we've got Shredder on a strict chicken nuggets only diet. So I do need everyone here to check their pockets, make sure they've got no chicken nuggets on them today. So I had another ride on flight with Terrastore there, back road that time. You really do get pulled down that drop, which is much more forceful than at the front. There is a very noticeable rattle at the back though, not enough to detract from the ride experience too much, but certainly not as smooth as it is at the front. Also caught a bit of the dinosaur meet and greet there with Shredder the Raptor. Uh, he again seemed as though he, his voice was very influenced by some very specific sound effects from Jurassic Park. Strange that. Look at these awesome seats carved out of the wood here. Almost Game of Thrones vibes there. So it's been a lovely day so far here at Portons Park. The weather is beautiful, especially for early March. Very low crowds, which means all of the rides have been practically walk-on. And uh, despite the low crowds, still a really nice atmosphere in and around the park. So yeah, really impressed today. Another thing to mention about Portons Park is they don't actually have any fast track system here. So what that means is that the queue lines, even on a busy day, tend to move quite quickly because you don't have any paid queue jumpers slowing the main queue lines down. And that's something I wish more parks would do. I kind of understand that fast track brings a lot of money in, but it does make standby queues a lot more frustrating for guests who have paid a lot of money to get into the park already. And I appreciate there are some viewers that really love Fast Track, so let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. So I'm going to finish my day here in Tornado Springs. I think that yellow beast behind me could do with another ride or two. I think it's such a wonderful area of the park, so where better to finish my day? Even the restrooms here are well themed, complete with sheep on the roof. And if you see up there, Benji the dog is hanging out the window. I had one last ride there on Storm Chaser, another really good ride. When you face inwards on that helix, you really feel it, it's so forceful. So I'm gonna head my way outside the park now and give my final thoughts. But I think overall it's been a really good day. So there is also this old um, theatre here, which is obviously going under some quite significant construction work at the moment. And some paranormal activity has been detected. So I'm not sure if that's left over from Halloween last year or whether they're planning a slightly spooky attraction. Um, I would say one thing I feel they lack here is uh, a good dark ride. So something new in here could go down really well, I think. So they have a big merchandise and toy shop on the exit here. All kinds of stuff. So that concludes a really lovely day at Portons Park. This really is one of the best family theme parks in the country. I do think the TripAdvisor reviews are absolutely warranted and deserved. They do a lot of things really well here. Uh, I think you've got four top tier family coasters. Um, obviously for the younger guests, Peppa Pig's World has been a revelation for this park. I really like the Lost Kingdom area because I just like dinosaurs. And it's just a really well-rounded, well-put-together family theme park. As with all places, there are one or two opportunities just to improve. I think that big tin roofed uh, toilet block as you come in, maybe that could look a little nicer. It's not the most attractive thing to see as you walk directly into the theme park. Um, and it's just that section over the back with Cobra and Magma. Again, I think that is something they're going to be looking at. I think that is probably the next section of the park they're going to sort of pump some serious investment into, hopefully. And it's also good to see that it looks like they're doing something with the old theatre too. So, um, I mean, this is one of the top up-and-coming theme parks in the country right now. And if you've not 
been down here then I highly recommend it. It's only about an hour down the M3 from the likes of Legoland and Thorpe Park as well so uh, even if you're coming down from north you can kind of bundle a whole bunch of parks together. Um, yeah I really like this place I highly recommend it and certainly being open on Mondays and Fridays at this time of year in early March I mean there are no other theme parks open at this time so it's a perfect opportunity to come down get some rides in on a lovely day like this. What more can you say? So if family theme parks your thing then I did visit Legoland a couple of weeks ago you can watch that vlog up on the screen here. Thank you very much for watching if you could leave a like on the video that really helps. Other than that Take care, I'll see you next time.